Hey guys, back with another video where we're going to be looking at the raw files of the Z6 II. Now, Adobe has finally updated Lightroom Camera Raw um, to accept the Z6 II files. Now, I know there was a workaround. I know people have viewed a few of the raw files, but the workflow just isn't the same. I wanted to wait until we had Lightroom set up in Bridge and Photoshop to accept the raw files. So I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at this selection of images here and see what we can pull out of the raw files. I've just been editing a few of the JPEGs that I've been posting recently. Um, so I'm excited to kind of see and dive into the raw files of the Z6 II. I can't imagine them being much different to the Z6 because obviously being the same sensor. But we'll take a look anyways and see kind of what information we can pull out of it. Um, and I'll do a couple of quick edits on these ones here. So you guys can see what you can get out of a Z6 II raw file. So if we look at this image here. I'll actually show you the first image. I'm using off-camera flash from, uh, this is from a recent shoot that I've just shot. If you want to see that, I'll pop a link, you can go and check that out. You can see the behind the scenes of that shoot, but I tend to shoot high speed um, frame rate so I can capture it both with flash and without flash. So obviously that's with the flash. Obviously this is without the flash. So we're going to work on the one without the flash, because obviously she's all in shade there. And um, so we're going to kind of see what kind of information we can pull out of this scene. So we'll start by obviously increasing the exposure because it is very underexposed. I think we're going to have to go quite extreme here. So we'll pull up as far as we can. That's 2.7 stops. Under exposed. Bring back the highlights. And drop the whites a little bit. I think that might be a little bit too. So I'm going to bring it back down to about 2. Bring it back down to 2. And then we'll start playing around with the blacks. We'll open the blacks because that will bring it right up next time, doesn't it? Open them blacks right up there. I haven't touched the shadows yet. I can touch up some of the shadows. There we go. Oh, that's nice. So there's already light there, and obviously there'll be already light bouncing off this umbrella up here as well. Um, so that's going to give it a nice bit of light. That's already there. So we'll be able to pull up quite a lot of information already as you can see obviously there's quite a bit of it overexposed around um so we'll just drop down that exposure just a little bit more and that's probably i would probably say that would be the correct exposure there that's what i would have saw when i was there obviously the camera seeing the extremes of the highlights and the shadows and i have underexposed it in the camera so i can use the flash that's kind of what it would be seeing now how else would I treat this? I'll probably go straight for the skin tones and start adjusting the skin tones a little bit. I'm just bringing them up ever so slightly. Brighten that all up. And then at this point, I'll probably just grab a brush. I'll just highlight on the front of the face and then just lift that up a little bit. Just a little bit more. It. I think if we we'll go to the before, so that's obviously it shot as it is backlit, and that is with a tiny, tiny little bit of adjustment. And obviously, it's still a bit little bright, so I will probably grab a gradient tool, dark this down on that side, we'll just pull that exposure down, and then we'll grab another one, bring it in this side. Here. Go back to the basics and then we'll grab a clarity and actually just make it pop just a tiny little bit more. And there you have it. That is the raw file with a few quick adjustments on it. So obviously this is going to the extreme. I mean you wouldn't necessarily shoot. Well, you just wouldn't shoot like this. You wouldn't shoot that far underexposed. But it's nice to see what information you can pull back out of these raw files from the Z6 II. I mean, that now looks like a really nice natural shot. So you're allowed to pull quite a bit of information out of this image. So if we zoom into the image as well, you see obviously there's always going to be a little bit of noise. We haven't done any noise reduction, actually. 
I like a little bit of noise in my images, especially when I'm shooting like this. Not when I'm shooting like this, actually, but if I do have to do a little bit of lifting of the shadows and the blacks. There's a tiny bit of the noise reduction in there, the masking, shorten its mask out. And there we have it. We'll just leave it like that. So there you go, that's one of the files there, and that looks really nice. That's one of the things I like about the Nikon files is that the information you can pull out of them is just absolutely stunning. Um, you can really can go to town on these, and that's one of the reasons why I shoot Nikon. So if we take a look at this next image, and I'll actually show you what I've done to this. Again, if I go to the before on this one, that's how underexposed that one was, and I'll show you what I've done and what I've achieved to achieve so we'll look at this image that's really, really underexposed. See, again, shooting it in the same area, but gives you a good idea of what you can pull, what information you can pull out of the Z6 files. And that's how I've ended up again. It's quite a nice, natural looking shot. And we'll go through what I've done. Um, the camera basics there, you can see, I've just adjusted the exposure quite a bit, obviously, because it was super, super underexposed. The highlights down to 87. If I drop that exposure actually down to where it was, you can see it's really underexposed. Underexposed. But you can get some really, really pull some really great information out of these uh, these fills. The highlights have dropped down quite a bit because it was backlit. Um as you can get, see what I've done there with the clarity, saturation, vibrance, uh, added a little bit of dehairs, or took a little bit of dehairs off actually to take away some of the contrast. And if we we'll go to these are the gradients I've used. One this side, just dot on that side down. One that side, the dot on this side down. And at the top to make this this highlighted bit here. I'll switch them off. To make that highlighted bit on the roof kind of match the floor as well. So it kind of just draws into the subject there. So it's a nice bit of information pulled out of that file. So he has another image of the scene that we were shooting in. Um, we'll just go back to the basics. Like that and obviously we'll bring the exposure right up drop the highlights down not really much I need to do with this to be fair it's um it's quite light just open up the black it gives it a bit more brilliance Contrast in it. And there we go. We'll go to the before and after that one. That's pulled up to nice, nice information out of that one as well. You always want to get obviously noise in the shadows, but it looks lovely. It really does look nice. I'm super happy with the raw files but with the Z6. I really am. Especially if again we go back at this one, they just look stunning. They really do, just beautiful. I mean, you see how much it was underexposed. It just looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, don't get us wrong. Using flash looks even better. Um, again, this is the raw file. Obviously, I've lit it the way I want. It's still obviously the shadows. I probably could have opened up the shutter speed a little bit more, but it would have meant blowing out the background, and I didn't want to do that. So if we open up. The shadows on this one just actually what we'll do i tend not to try and open up the shadows as much i would always try and open up the blacks first because i just think it's like adds a bit more brilliance to the whole overall scene and we'll open up the shadows just a tad drop the highlights down a little bit just a tiny bit i'll probably warm this one up a little bit more and then again add a bit of a gradient map to that I'm so happy these raw files are out now. I'm really, really happy about the raw files. Never, never shoot JPEGs. I've always shot raw files, so not being able to shoot, yeah, not being able to edit the raw files has been a bit. I've been rather impatient. This just means I can get out there and start actually working on a lot of my composites and a lot of ideas I have in my head going forward. Just going to go down to the lumens. Just brighten up the skin tone just a tad. And get a 
Falsch im Namen. There we go. We'll go before and after with that one. Let's see, there's not much done to that. Just a tiny little bit of tweaking. Tiny, tiny little bit of tweaking. So obviously getting it the way you want in camera the best you can and then this is what post-production is for, just to get the finishing off and get it looking the way you want it looking. So you want all the information on these images. These are shot at 1, 3, 25th second, f1.8, ISO 100. I think that is the same for most of the images. Yep, 35, 1.8s there. Just beautiful, beautiful files out of the Nikon. So if anybody's been watching the videos and anybody's been seeing the posts that I've been posting on the uh, YouTube community, you know obviously the reason why I shoot Nikon is because of the image quality you get out of the cameras. That is it. There's not a bad camera on the market, folks. Everybody bangs on about, obviously, IO, autofocus, and everything else. Like, and honestly, it's just, it just does make life a little, little bit easier, but it's not efficient. It's not essential, sorry. If you ask a lot of professional photographers if they attempt to use eye autofocus or single point autofocus, which is how we used to always shoot with a DSLR, majority of them will tell you single point autofocus. So, at the end of the day, it's the image quality out of the camera that is the most important in my eyes because obviously that's what we're, we're capturing. We're capturing the image and we want the best quality image we can possibly get out of the camera. So there you go folks, that's a first look at the Z6 II RAW files. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you then.